He used to work in the land department, and he's an expert on land in Ghana. You see, Garvey Town is one, but there are many areas in Ghana that you may want to look at, and other parts of Africa that you may want to invest in. Uh, you may want to look at mountain property. You may want to look at ocean property. You may want to look at farm property. You may want to look at city property. You may want to look at all kinds of different properties, not only in Ghana, but other parts. So you need to know how it works and how the land works, how the traditional land has been um, allocated and the history. So this particular brother is going to give you a historical overview on how to own land and how to protect yourself um, from certain pitfalls. So let's bring on our brother, Dr. Asofu Dunkwa. Let's bring him. Greetings. Uh, we know land is a very important subject matter all over the world. In Ghana, we have lands which belong to streams, that is in the northern and the upper regions. And then we have two lands, which is uh, the southern part of Ghana, and then we have family lands. The origin of this land came about through war conquest. You know, in the former time, the ancient time, there were wars all over the world. So in Ghana, there were wars who here, Ashantis, Dangerous, Fatis, Kamus, and what have you. So, when you come to Ghana, the lands in the southern part of the country is basically owned by the schools. Then within every, any school are families. So during the conquest of the war, when these uh, lands are acquired through conquest, the families who helped during the war, they are given some of the lands to settle on in a form of gift. And then these families, to within the families, uh, family members, they are also given lands. And then when you go to the northern, they call them skin lands. Because then the chiefs over there, they used to sit on uh, animal hides and skins. So then they call it skin lands. When you come to the southern part of Ghana, they sit on stools. That's when they sit on stools come out of wood, which is the symbol of the occupant of the stool. Like in the Ashanti region, we have Otufo, who is the custodian of all Ashanti lands. All lands in the Ashanti region are vested in him. We go to the Fanti side, that is in the central region. We also have the chiefs, they do, they have their lands. So out of these family lands, and school lands and scale lands, the government or the state, also by executive instruments, can acquire any land for the purpose of building schools, roads, or anything which is in the interest of the state. So basically, the government has no land. If there's any state land or government land, it means it has to go through a legal process. And that legal process is done through a publication notifying the owners of the land that a particular land is being needed to be used for the state. So when government acquires this land, then the government in turn can also give them out to institutions, educational institutions, and other institutions, state parasita uh, organizations are all given this land. So in Ghana, 
if you need a lamp and then it's coming from the stools, formerly lamps could be sold to individuals, institutions, and members. There's now, by laws of the land, lands are not to be sold. All lands are given out as lease. When I say lease, it means the land is given to you and it's not an outright sale. So you pay what we call a ground rent, which annually you have to pay. And then, depending upon where you are having your lease land, they have a tech whereby when the land is given to you, it expires. When the land, the, uh, the lease is expired, most of the areas you have uh, opportunity of renewing your lease. The land, as far as you occupy it, the land belongs to the lessor. That is the one who granted the land to you. And you can be on the land as much as you can. And then, as far as you are following the clauses in the lease, which is drafted by qualified solicitors or lawyers, as far as you are abiding by them, then you keep on paying your grant rent. Now, if you want to acquire land in Ghana, land, we have industrial lands, we have commercial lands, we have residential lands, and we also have agricultural lands. So all these lands, when you acquire them, before you acquire them, there are certain processes that you have to go through. For instance, if you want to acquire land in where it's not an industrial or an agricultural purpose, but for a residential or commercial development, you first need to get a plan, a site plan, or a map of the land in which you are interested. And then there are various land agencies in the country whereby you have to go and make a search. This search is necessary because if you need a land for example a residential purpose, you go to the landowner and then when you go to the landowner, the land is given to you immediately in order not to get yourself into a land problem what you do is you acquire a site plan from the landowner when you get the site plan first and foremost you go to the land agency responsible for registration of lands and then you make an inquiry there when you make an inquiry they have records of all lands so they will give you a history of the land in a written report. So that will be indicated for you to know whether you are dealing with the rightful owner or the person who has got a proper title to the land. Having finished with that, the next thing is that you want the land for a specific purpose. So the land's usage is also very necessary in the sense that if you go and acquire a land, if the land is falling on the road, as far as the planning departments or the various areas are concerned, it means when you acquire that land, you will not be permitted to develop it because it's meant for a road. So it's very necessary if you want to acquire land, you get an expert either a lawyer or a land administrator who is conversant with all the various laws and then he will guide you so that you will be in a position to apply the land. So having got your search report, if you are sure the report that is given to you, there is no encumbrance on the land, then the next thing is that when the plans are prepared, that is the site plans are prepared, you then engage a solicitor 
who will prepare uh, legal instruments in the form of an indenture whereby the landowner, if it's a chief or a family, they will sign their portion and you will also sign your portion. When the document has been executed, when I say executed, that is having completed, uh, the lesser signing is portion and you, the lessee, that is the one who is acquiring the land, having signed the land. Then, then you take it to the uh, land agency, whereby you go through a process, and then having finished with that, they will record your name. As far as the limitation of the land that you have acquired, maybe you have acquired an a one acre of land, and you have a side plan together with the indenture or the document. So they will plot it on their record sheet. So that will give you the support or the title of the land. So in case you also want to do away with the land, and then you will be in a position to also transfer the interest in a form of a lease, uh, you can either assign or you can uh, sublet or sublease to the person who is depending upon the type of uh, title that you have on the land. And then apart from that, apart from that, you also need to make sure that depending upon the uh, agreement that you have with the, the sub, some of them in some cases you will be required to develop the land within a certain time. And the foreign side, you don't develop the land, the land within that time. It means you have breached the clause inside. For instance, you are also in the agreement you will be required to pay your rent on specific times. And you also have to make sure that you go by all those things that you have signed for. So that when you preach anything of the clauses in the indenture, the lesser can enter the land and then you lose your interest that you have in the land. So when you come and you need a land, first you must make sure that the land that you are acquiring is meant for the purpose for which you need a land for. In the form of uh, land which are virgin lands, for instance, when you acquire it, either for mining or for uh, farming or for whatever you want to do. That one too. Uh, when you check from the various organizations, and then you'll be advised and directed as to whether the acquisition that you are making, you can use for that purpose. So, at the moment in the country, unless somebody who has already acquired a land, whereby he has a freehold interest, that one, then you can go in the line. But when you are not a citizen of the country, there is no way that you can buy any land. Even if it's a freehold interest, it will be converted into a leasehold as far as uh, you are not a citizen of the country. And then when you are not a citizen, normally your leasehold, the term or the duration is less. But when, for instance, you are an indigenous <coughs> country, that one you can have a term of 99 years. But in the case where you are a foreigner, maybe you may be given at most about 50 years. And then when the term is ended, then you can then release it. So we must be very careful anytime when we want to acquire the land. We must make sure that we engage somebody to guide us so that he can direct us as to the steps and the process we have to go through so that we don't get ourselves involved in any litigation. In Ghana, for instance, when you are involved in any land litigation, it's going to cost you lots of money, and you have to be going to court, and it can take you so many years again, so you'll be going to court. So I would advise that now that you have come here, you want to invest. Investment, 
I only did 10 in land. You must make sure that you go in for land which are not in government. Think that I will end here when it gets to this person and maybe I have been in a position to expatiate whatever anybody wants to do as far as land in land is concerned. <laughs> Okay, let's give him another round of applause. Huh? Right, Learn expert. <laughs>